Sunshine Live im Interview. How is uh, your child, by the way? And do you think uh, nowadays it should have worried a little bit more? Ten years later? Uh, oh, our child. You mean, don't you worry, child? Absolutely. It's still around. It's still doing great. Who is the child? Uh, it's, it could be you. It could be uh, anybody, like, really. Whoever feels like a child. <laughs> All right. Do you still think I shouldn't, shouldn't worry too much? Because, um, uh, like, in my surrounding, even in the private life or in the media, like, people start to worry too much? Yeah, it depends. You know, everybody's different. Every individual has its own uh, life to carry, you know. So it's, it's a good time to be alive. And we should appreciate the time that we have and we should enjoy it. Absolutely. My, my opinion, too. Uh, last time uh, you were talking to Falk in December, I think. So we knew already about your collaboration with The Weeknd and the big arena tour uh, to come. Uh, but there was this exciting, like in German, we say Vorfreude, which uh, word by word means before joy. Uh, it just describes the feeling like when you're looking forward to something and you cannot wait. So, um, yeah, you did a little secret out of the collaborations to come. And um, we all kind of yeah, were still stuck in this, in this uh, weird pandemic. Um, meanwhile, I feel a, a little sense of freedom again. How is it to be really fully back, all three of you? Freedom, like you said, you know, it, feel, it feels great. And we worked a long time for this moment. So it feels amazing, you know back with the boys in the studio and making music that we love. And we made an album and we're going out touring and seeing the fans and traveling the world again. And I, I feel like enjoying things with your friends, it's much nicer than enjoying it yourself. Oh yeah. My colleague Rezi, she uh, was uh, one of the lucky persons uh, who was allowed to pre-listen your album. She came back into the office and said, ah, I was pre-listening. I said, nice for you. Um, uh, so, <laughs> But meanwhile, I listened to it too. And I mean, the yeah, most entertaining mafia of the world uh, uh, collaborating with the uh, um, hottest policeman ever. Um, how does collaborations like this happen? I mean, uh, are you sitting there having a beer and say, oh, let's call Sting if you got time? Or how does something like this happen? Actually, we just sampled his old song. And so we had this vocal and we made like this club track around it. And we said, should we try and clear this sample or not? And then, you know, we thought this is going to be a big headache and probably not going to be possible, but let's give it a try. And we gave it a try. And he came back and said, guys, I love this. This is great. Let me re-record it for you. And he did. And it sounded even better than what we had sampled. So, yeah. And then after that, we went to a restaurant and celebrated with him. So there was a beer <laughs> in the story. <laughs> Have you ever had, like, uh, this is just coming up my mind, like, uh, have you ever had a trial of a collaboration and then you, you were in the studio and said, oh, whoa, no, what a jerk. Oh, it doesn't work. Um, yeah, I mean, you work with a lot of people and uh, you don't get that far if the chemistry is wrong, you know, then it's, it's kind of like, kind of early on, things shift. So um, we haven't, like, spent a lot of time with someone and, and then realized afterwards like this is not going to work you know so uh, and we're very you know when we pick people we work with it people we look up to or love their voices and it's a really like respectable relationship rather than just like hey we want to work with this person and they're like you know whatever so it, it's a really nice organic friendship it always starts there We always spend a lot of time and talk about music and talk about life. And we, we get to know each other before we make music. Like Falk loves the question about the technical writers or the writers in general. Um, now, I know your drink-wise writers are pretty unspectacular, but um, your technical writers, they are Absolutely spectacular. And I told it uh, my flatmate uh, yesterday. She's working for Native Instruments and she said, oh, by the way, they have complicated stage setups. I got a list and I had to collect all the things Swedish House Mafia needs. So um, she collected the stuff you needed. Um, yeah. uh, 
And you you said you told Falk that you are like this yeah me, me, yeah you like machines and also for your stages. Can you give us a little sneak peek without spoiling? Is there a special Swedish house mafia machine to come on the arena tour? Yes, yes, for sure, absolutely. A little, a little, a little sneak. <laughs> no, we built this incredible thing with teenage engineering, uh, which is our whole setup. So it, it's a big combination of things that we love and uh it's one big piece it's six meters it it weighs a half a ton it, it's incredible and it contains some of those native instruments uh things that you said also yeah yeah so she was right but we yeah. custom built everything so. and we're doing some more stuff with teenage engineering so stay tuned yeah uh, we will believe me um, yeah but do you do you just bring up the idea or do you help like to build Like active. Yeah, we bring the ideas, but we actually also help to design and solution and build. So we're very, very, very hands on with everything, you know, everything from lights to sound to everything, everything. Have you ever had like a stage like a machine that that failed on on a, like life an embarrassing stage moment or anything that said, oh, wow, I expected. It's more human error. It's, it's yeah. more human error, you know, that. Yeah. Like when you're playing stuff live, sometimes, you know, things don't really work out. But like, it's human error and it's part of the charm, you know. Have an example, like a burning leg or? No, but more like you, you forget to play a stem or pressing, the wrong, button. pressing the wrong button, something would stop or loop or like things like that. But like for, for, for the crowd, I don't think they notice because you were you know, we're super fast to like save the situation, you know? So I don't think anybody notices, it, but uh, we notice. Like uh, pushing the wrong button, tell me a story. Wow, has that happened so often? Like, <laughs> uh, oh no, I wanted to play a song. Oops. <laughs> yeah. um, like I read, like before you uh, performed as a Swedish house mafia, you already had performances, uh, all three of you together. But nowadays we see your performances on these huge stages. I cannot imagine like, uh, yeah, you're on a small stage. How can I imagine, how can I picture myself your first performances? Yeah, I mean, small clubs, small rooms. If you think about Good like vibes. a small bar that contains between 15 and 50 people, you know, and we would just stand there in the booth and play with loud music in a packed room. And then gradually we went, you know, you had people. So like when we started out, it was like small, tiny rooms, you know, like a bar. And then with the music growing and with the interest of us and the music that we made and all the individual catalogs, which are huge, you know, we've, we've slowly, slowly, slowly built up to until what you see today. And, uh, you I know, love last that. time we, were, you know, last couple of weeks ago when we were on stage, it was 120,000 people and we were you close. Mean, uh, Coachella the or, or Tel Aviv? Yeah. yeah the Coachella, you know, so like, We and then you know a couple of days before Coachella we did a private party for a couple of hundred people and we DJed and it was like you know intimate and nice and club club vibes. Do you play different um, dancing? So, yeah, I mean it's fun. It's still fun. We we go and do after parties after we do big shows usually. So after we do like a arena or a stadium or something, we always like to go into the clubs and and kind of release the tension, you know, and just have fun and DJ for a couple of hours and just like bring our friends and people that came to the show and and just have a really good time like back in the day. Like I can can imagine like the Swedish House Mafia Arena too. You probably uh play the Swedish house mafia sounds but backstage or in the, uh, the after party are you just DJing and then what yeah. kind of what kind of uh sound is backstage? It depends on the vibe. We can go really dark electronic or we can go techno or deep or mix it with like if you listen to songs on on the album that are deeper, you know, that it touches it touches the same vein and the ID. So um, it depends on the vibe, you know, it's like sometimes, uh, yeah, it's it just, it's on the energy, the, the energy decides. That's a good, that's a good answer, actually, the only correct answer, actually. <laughs> um, have you ever experienced, uh, after a Berlin gig, um, uh, an after party in a Berlin club, or? Uh, no, we haven't played, but we like to go out, you know, 
Um, so we always, you know, do the rounds. So when we come to Berlin, we, we're going to probably do the rounds. Yeah. I love Berlin. Yeah, same. So because you already had some nightlife experiences here or? Of course. Well, kind of. <laughs> Secret. <laughs> <laughs> once <laughs> <laughs> all right um uh, like um let's come uh, to the album it's paradise again um yeah. paradise again because all of uh, all three of you are back together or because uh freedom is coming back i feel like freedom it, in what we're doing it's it's seb said it earlier it's it's very individual what paradise again is for us it's like like you always say it best it's 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 a little club it's it's the beach it's whatever it is Whatever you identify paradise with, that's what it is, and uh, it's really individual. Uh, but but for, first and foremost, we're back together, you know. So for us, it's it's like let's do it again. Like on parties, I describe myself like I'm just this ass shaky tech house uh, ass shaker, um, uh, and um, I love the vibe and the atmosphere of the opener track with Mapai. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. it's. it's What can you tell me about him and about this this absolute there's no there's no description of the, the the sound of paradise again. There's a description for each of the song, but um first of all, um what can you tell me about the collaboration with Mapai? Mapai is actually a, a a Swedish woman that we pitched. Uh so oh. we, we tuned her a little bit, yeah. Uh, she's a great artist. Uh, she's been around for a while. We've known her for a very long time. So it's a really natural, like organic collaboration as well, you know. Um, and then for the sound of, of, of the album in general, we've had a lot of time now to be in the studio. And when you make an album, you have more freedom to make things that don't necessarily have to fit in a specific. Uh, when you do one off singles, you know, you want to tick other boxes. But with an album, you can kind of create the journey. So you can go from you know you, you want to take people on a roller coaster if you listen through the album so um it's more an expression of all the sides of us you know we're three individuals we've we've been through a lot we have a lot of musical experience we grew up with craft work and vangelis to michael jackson and quincy jones and you know barry white and we early days of techno early days of how we've seen the whole journey and the whole spectrum so for us it's more of expressing all the discoveries that we did throughout life how would you like i heard a lot of um yeah people complaining about new electronic music it kind of it, it kind of felt like there's a there's a break of creativity um like uh one dj said um Uh, I miss the confetti, the confetti in the new music. Um, uh, what's your opinion about new electronic tracks? You can buy confetti. You know, confetti can be like, I can shoot confetti, you know, in the room. Yeah, but uh, people will, you know, it's always tough to compare old music with new music also. Like, you know, if you're part of the old generation and you were a kid when you heard that music, you will have special memories to it. That, that maybe new music will not give you the same feeling, you know? Um, so, I mean, you can always listen to the old music. It's always there. Um, but I think that, you know, new music is new music and it will always push forward and develop. And You know what? Also, like now when you were talking, I was thinking it takes people a lot of, some people it takes really long time to understand things. Mm. You know, a lot of people takes a long time to like, digest music and 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 understand music and pe a lot of people don't like change which is fine you know um but but in the end of the day like an artist is a human being right so i don't like to be told what to do nobody likes to be told what to do because we're free right so telling an artist what to do is kind of putting them in a leash um and that's not why you're fans of them from the beginning so uh, um You can't leash us, you know, we're going to be free and do whatever we feel like expressing. If that is a quiet song for seven minutes or if that's a, a hard metallic, you know, rock and roll song, so be it. You know, whatever we feel like going into the studio and making, that's going to be the right choice for us. And I feel like we made an album for us, you know, and, 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 and for the fans who appreciate the journey. 
I mean, yeah, tell me something like people in my age, I'm 31, are starting to say like, oh, wow, Britney Spears music was way better quality than new music. What? Um, <laughs> so um, that's really, it's uh, you just um, like what uh, your memories, um, yeah, what brings up uh, your memories. So do you have a favorite uh, track on the album? Well, it's... Uh... It's hard to say. It's like all the songs are children. You know what I mean? Like it's, you cannot say that you have a favorite child. So all of them have their special moments. I actually been on vacation for a week. So I've been listening to our song Home a lot because that fitted perfectly to the vibe that I was in on the beach and just relaxing. And, uh, you know, I've been listening to Heaven Takes You Home a lot. I've been listening to I've been listening to the album actually a lot. But um you know, all of them. <laughs> like so my kids. No, no, please. No, I think that, you know, I think that the, what you said, Sebastian, about the, you cannot choose a favorite child. It's the same with the songs. And, you know, it depends what mood you're in. Right now, if I'm out DJing, I really love to play, um, you know, Can You Feel It? Because it's just such a playable song. And then when you're a home chilling in the sun maybe for you is a favorite song so it's yeah. like it's depending on the mood how did jacob's note find its way in the middle of these electronic yeah sounds? i mean we love music right and music is music is music and we are good friends with jacob and we love the contrast that he comes from you know orchestra he comes from classical music and he loves what we do and we love what he do and we said wouldn't it be nice if you made a nice interlude to one of our songs and he just said i have this idea and and you know he he recorded the film on his phone of the idea from his piano and we said you know what we would like to use the audio, the, yeah. the audio from the clip so that's why it's called jacob's note because when it came to to the phone, it said Jacob's note. So we're like, okay, perfect. He's like, but can I record it in a, in a proper yeah. studio? I'm like, no, 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 we like <laughs> this. This feels more authentic, you know? Man, the guy wanted to see a real studio. <laughs> and yeah, nice. I really love it. It's like, well, you can just, yeah, turn your head off and listen to it. Like, um, is it then also because you say it's like a, with a child, you cannot compare childs. Is it then also... When um, friends and family, I mean, forget about official critics, but when friends and family criticize a track, does that feel like, well, you uh, you told me I have an ugly child? No, yes, a little bit. Yes, a little bit. Yeah, but you also decide on kind of like the purpose of making a song, right? So like me personally, like if I go into the studio making a song, I don't like hear anybody criticizing it because I don't care, you know? So like, I, uh, you, you know, it depends what the purpose is of the song, you know? And obviously when you play stuff out that early, you can like, okay, you can read a crowd and you can be like, okay, mix wise, the kick or like, you know, the break needs to be longer or, or this and that. And that, that's a beauty, beauty of it. You know, you can, you can try it out. But in the end of the day, it's like, once it's finished and all of us are happy with it and we spent the time together in the studio and finished it and like that's that's the ultimate like check you know absolutely i mean all in all it's like um also with the sound like i mean swedish house mafia made it made it happen that uh, to deliver like electronic music all over the world is there do you do, do you see a, a, a difference of the taste in uh, several nations like or yeah. uh, Yeah. Yeah, I feel like the core fans are kind of aligned of, of things they like, but then you know, I notice a lot of other artists being really uh happy about certain songs and sounds of the album and being really inspired and motivated and so I feel like fans and other artists around the world are like snapping up different things, you know. Mafia can be a favorite which is super dark, slow, electronic. Then other people are like calling on is a favorite or like, you know, for you, the world is reacting differently. I think it's about the climate also and the time, you know, so, you know, where it's summer, they might react different to songs and more big cities are reacting to different types of sonics. And it's really interesting. 
I was actually talking uh, with a psychologist about this phenomenon that we listen to like more melancholic tracks in the winter time and in the summertime we put out the, the fun songs. It uh, he said it has uh, more physical reasons because yeah. the body um, uh, is slower when it's colder. That was his answer. Uh, I expected a little bit more. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> My, I have one signature question that, uh, because I'm really curious about the answer always, um, because for me, electronic music is comparable to your first coffee. In the beginning, it tastes shitty and then you're addicted. Uh, do you remember the moment or the time or the, the artist or the party, whatever, that infected you with the love to electronic music? Yeah, it was the first time when we heard a white label of Daft Punk's The Funk. The Funk. That was my moment, 1996. Daft Punk is often, very often the answer. But do you all have the same, the same moment? Well, I mean, I listened to, to a lot of Scandinavian Swedish techno. So there was uh, this vinyl from Adam Bayer who blew my mind. And it was, uh, I don't know what it's called. It was, it was Planet E something, I don't remember. But I remember I had it on a cassette because someone like put it on cassette for me and I remember just hearing that kick drum really fast with the reverb like doo -foo, doo -foo, doo -foo. and I was like what is this and I just fell in love straight away okay so after I your gig in Berlin you have one day off you should check it out <laughs> yeah. be kind of afterwards um like um I mean, I have uh, thousands of questions. I mean, um, um, but Sunshine Life is really turning 25 years this year. It's uh, amazing. Wow. Congrats. Congrats. This is what I wanted to ask you for. Do you want to congratulate the station? Of like we're, co we're collecting uh, some, yeah, congratulations. Of course. Audio uh, or video? Um, um, we are actually doing both. So I'm recording. Um, when you <laughs> come together, okay. yes, yeah, come together. Um, Sunshine Live, congrats, 25 years, it's a big number. Um, and we can't wait to be here for the next 25. Thank you for the support. You were the first guest, folks, said in the studio, but I cannot, uh, I cannot believe it. Now, maybe he has a uh, wrong memory. And then we're also collecting like um, IDs in the, in the mother tongue. Uh, could you tell us in Swedish, um, hi, we're Swedish House Mafia and you're listening to Sunshine Life, the home of the DJs. I cannot, I can just tell you like in Dutch, it's insane. <laughs> in Swedish? Yeah. yeah. In Swedish, yeah. The home of the DJs is very interesting. And... Hey, we are Swedish House Mafia and you listen to Sunshine Live, the Hemmet for all the DJs. <laughs> You see what I mean? It never ends without a laugh. Yeah, awesome. Um, uh, so, like, um, I mean, the arena tour is obvious and um, all the rest. Where are you sitting at the moment? Stockholm. In Hong Kong? No, Stockholm, Stockholm. Ah, okay. Sweden. All right, all right. And then next uh, is then uh, the States again. And then you come yeah, back yeah. to Europe. Yes, sir. I mean, we have, uh, we have Ibiza on uh, July 17th, and then we have the tour starting in North America, July 29th. Maybe one last thing, because my colleague just came up uh, very nervous. He said, wow, I was just partying with these guys from Israel, and now they pay me a flight to play at the Pride next week. So he's very, uh, uh, very, very excited about this. Um, do you have any... Any recommendations or any any? What can he expect from the from the Tel Aviv uh, vibe you you've just played there? Uh, go and go and eat hummus. Oh yeah, good food, good food. <laughs> Enjoy. I will, I will tell him absolutely. I'm very excited to see what kind of machines my um, uh, flatmate packed for you, or what yes. um, all the, the stuff. And um, I appreciate uh, your time. It was nice to see all three of you together. And um, the invitation is uh, still uh, there. When you're in Berlin, we have a beautiful new studio. We have um, all the setup you need. We even have a light show in the studio. Um, please come by and uh, play a little studio session. We will. We will. Yeah, welcome. We would be 
grateful. Awesome. Nice Thank you so day. much for having us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ciao, Take care. Ciao. Bye. Ciao. 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 Ciao.